Hi guys, I'm your friend Arunika and today I am back with you all. So, we have started the chapter Nelson Mandela, A Long Walk to Freedom uh, and we have already completed two parts of it, right? So, today is the third and the last part. As I've told you, I will, uh, we will discuss this chapter in parts, right? So, uh, today is the last part, so let's get started. And if you have not seen the videos before this uh, this video, then you can check out, okay? And then you can understand the chapter more easily. So this is the last part. So let's get started. In life, every man has twin obligations. So who said this? Nelson Mandela is saying that in life, every man has two obligations. Means Obligations means responsibilities. Means in life, every man has two responsibilities. What are they? Let's see. Obligation to his family, to his parents, to his wife and children. And he has an obligation to his people, his community, his country, in his, uh, his country, right? So he is saying, Nelson Mandela is saying that there are Every man has two obligations or responsibilities. First obligation is for the, for, uh, towards his family, towards his parents, his wife and the children. Means whole family. First responsibility is towards the family, wife, children, parents, right? And the second obligation or responsibility is for the people. His community, his country, right? So, in a civil and humane society, each man is able to ful fulfill those obligations according to his own inclinations and abilities. So, Nelson Mandela is saying that in everyone's life there is two responsibilities and everyone has been successful in, for, in fulfilling these responsibilities. These both are responsibilities. Right. According to his own inclinations, means natural tendency or behavior, according to his own behavior and the ability. Every cat, every man can uh, follow, every man can fulfill these obligations. But in a country like South Africa, now he's comparing all the peoples who can fulfill their obligations with the country of South African people. So he's saying, that but in a country like South Africa, it was almost impossible for a man of my birth and color to fulfill both of these obligations. So he is trying to say, uh, he is trying to say you all that in South Africa, but in South Africa it was impossible for the people like me, for the people like me, 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 uh, me means Nelson Mandela, as we all know, he is of black color, right? He is of black color and that's why and in South Africa there was a party system in which there was a discrimination between the color of the skin. So that's why he is saying here that but because, but it, it is impossible for a man of my birth and color to fulfill both of these obligations. It was impossible for me and like me, many other people who are having black color, it was impossible for them to follow these both obligations. Right? So, in South Africa, a man of color who attempted to live as a human being was punished and isolated. So, he is saying that in South Africa, a man like me means a black color people is if they tried to follow, fulfill these obligations or, or to live like a human being, then they are punished and isolated, right? Isolated means kept at a place away from the, their family, from their loved ones. Isolated at a lonely place. They are to be kept and punished also. Okay, so in South Africa, a man, who tried to fulfill his duty to his people was invisibly. Invisibly his here means unavoidably. So he is saying that in South Africa, 
a man who tried to fulfill his duty to his people was invitable means unavoidable ripped from his family and his home and was forced to live a life apart means they were being isolated a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion i did not in the beginning choose to place my people above my family now he is telling about himself that firstly at very first time i was not able to keep keep my my people means my country above my family because the family is the priority of all the living beings right especially humans the priority is family for all the human beings but those who keep their country first then their family they are the real heroes of our country so he is saying that at first i am not able to keep my country my people people of my country above my family but in attempting to serve my people i found that i was prevented from fulfilling my obligations as a son a brother a father and a husband right so here he is saying that when i was young means but i attempting to serve my people when he tried when he attempt to serve his people serve for the uh, cause of humanity right so he is saying i found that i was prevented i was prevented from fulfilling my obligations as a son a brother a father and a husband i was not born with hunger to be free he is saying that i was not born with a hunger to be free that hunger is not within me that i have to be free we are to be free freedom should be there in south africa no i was not born with hunger, with that hunger of freedom i was born free free in every way that i could know he said that i was free in every way that i could know i could know free to run in the field near my mother's house so he is telling for our uh, when he was child right when he was child he saying that when i was child my priority was my family i don't think about all these things that i have to be we have to be free from all these uh, system or all the apartheid system or the discrimination i was not doing all this about for me freedom at the young at a child when i was child for me the freedom is to the freedom is to uh uh feel uh, run in the fields near my mother's hut free to swim in the clear stream that ran through my village free to roast mealies under the stars and ride the broad backs of slow moving bulls so these are the freedom for nelson mandela when he was a child as long as i obeyed my father and abide by the customs of my tribe so he said it as long as my as i am obeyed as long as i obeyed my father and abided by the customs of my tribe i was not troubled by the laws of man or god so he is here saying that as as soon as i am as i am follow as i am uh, listening to my father's um father's rules or my what my father is saying i'm doing that till that time that till that time when i was listening to my father there was no problem and there was no trouble by the law of the man as well as the god right so it was only when i began to learn that my boyhood freedom was an illusion so he said that when i was my boyhood when i was at uh, boy a boy means he was a boy and when he was a little big than a child he is saying at that time i began to learn that my boy do boyhood freedom was an illusion means it is it was an imaginary at that time i was realized realized that it was uh, imaginary when i discovered as a young man that my freedom had already been taken from me that i begin to hunger for it 
At first, as a student, I wanted freedom only for myself. So he said that when I discovered as a young man that my freedom had already been taken from me, as he grows up, he realized that his freedom has already taken from him. Right? As when he was shy, he was not knowing that he was the uh, meaning of freedom for him when he was child was only that running through the uh, running through uh, near the village of his mother's heart and swimming in the clean stream water and all these things. But as he grows up, there uh, his freedom change. His view of uh, seeing the freedom change. So he say that at first, as I was a student, when Nelson Mandela was a student. The uh, the freedom, the term freedom meant for him that I wanted freedom only for myself. He wanted the freedom only for himself. The transitory freedom of being able to stay out at night. He wants that he he will uh, he stayed at night whole night. He stay at out, read what I pleased and go where I chose. Later, as a young man in Johannesburg, now he's saying that later, as a young man, when I was a young man, I yearned for the basic and honorable freedoms of achieving my potential, of earning my key, of marrying and having a family. The freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life. So he's saying that when I was a young man in Johannesburg, I yearned for the basic and honorable freedoms. Of the of achieving my potential, then he married and he uh, do the freedom. He uh, make out the responsibilities of towards his family, the freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life. But then I slowly saw that not only that not only was I not free, but my brothers and sisters were not. Free. Brothers and sisters no, doesn't mean that his brother and sister means the whole country means brothers and sister he is considering the whole nation. So he is saying later I realized that not I am only not free, but all my brothers and sisters are also not free. So here he is saying I saw that it was not just my freedom that was curtailed means reduced, but the freedom of everyone who looked like I did. So he uh, so he said that later I realized that it's not only me that my freedom is being reduced, but all those people who cease to be like me means who has a black color of their skin. That is when I joined the African National Congress, and that is when the hunger for my own freedom became the greater hunger for the freedom of my people. So he is saying. That when I realized that the freedom is not being curtailed for me only, but for all the nation, then I decided to join the African National Congress Party, that is ANC, and that is when the hunger for my freedom. And he said, then that that was the time that then that was the time when my hunger for the for the freedom comes up. Become the greater hunger for the freedom of my people. It was a desire for the freedom of my people to live their lives with dignity and self-respect that animated my life, that transformed a frightening young man into a bold one. So he's saying that when I realized all these things, that only my freedom is not being reduced, but all the freedoms, all the my countrymen freedom is being reduced. Then I realized, and then I become from a frightened man into a bold one, right? At present, he at uh, when he was a young boy, or when he when he didn't realize that the freedom is being reduced for him as well as his nation, he was a very frightening person. He was a very frightening man. But as soon as he realized that, as soon as the hunger for the freedom comes up, he said that. At that time, I become from a frightened man. I become a bold one. That drove a law-abiding attorney to become a criminal. That turned a family-loving husband into a man. So he's saying that 
when the hunger of freedom avails from me comes up comes out from me then at that time the man who follows all the laws make make the criminal has become now has now become the criminal and the family loving husband the family lo- loving husband has now become a man without a home for the struggle struggle doesn't came in sitting at a home struggle comes when we struggle ourselves means when we go out of the home and see the outer world then struggle comes not by sitting in a home and doing nothing struggle will won't come right success will won't come so he is saying that my family that a family loving husband with a man without a home that forced a life loving man he loved his life all human beings love their life right so he is saying that a life loving man to live like a monk means saint i am no more virtuous or self sacrificing than the next man but i found that i could not even enjoy the poor and limited freedoms i was allowed when i knew my people were not free freedom is indivisible the chains on any one of my people were the chains on all of them so i stay uh, saying that freedom is indivisible the chain on any one of the person is the chain on all of us the uh, i knew that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed so he is saying the oppressor must be liberated means must be free just as surely as the oppressed a man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hate means a man that's what south african people are doing they are taking the free right are taking the freedom their rights to our with them all right the whites are following the whites are only giving all the rules and things so he is saying that when a person takes another person's freedom then he is a prisoner of hatred right he is locked behind the bars of prejudice means a strong dislike without any good reason and narrow mindedness i am not truly free if i am taking away someone else's freedom he is saying i am not at all free when i take someone else's freedom that's not called freedom just as surely as i am not free when my freedom is taken from me right the oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity so the oppressor as well as the oppressed are being robbed by the humanity of their humanity so friends that's all for my today video and with this we have completed our chapter nelson mandela a long walk to freedom if you have to see all the parts you can see okay this is the third part so you will see from starting so that you can understand better so that's all for today's video